teacher talking sports what it does what it do how we live in happy thanksgiving eve to everyone my school at a half day so home a little early i'm gonna make my week 12 picks against the spread all these spreads are as of 3 30 p.m eastern time wednesday november 22nd so still 14 games over 500 for this season but a disappointing 5 8 and 1 week that easily could have been over 500 if Jason Myers didn't miss his first field goal in what seems like ages uh, Seattle also kind of played conservatively to have to attempt that 55 yarder could have maybe made it closer and then if Marquez Valdez Scantling didn't drop that easy long touchdown pass the Chiefs had a good chance of winning and covering if I win both those games seven six and one but that's football for you sometimes so again still 14 games over 500 and of course we got three games tomorrow and one game on Friday a Black Friday game so let's hope you know, I can start 3-1 and one and 4-0 and oh because I've really been struggling at 1 p.m. games uh, Eastern time the past three weeks. But let's take a look. No teams with buys this week. So start the Thanksgiving games. I don't know. Packers have won 2-3, and three, won their last game at Detroit. Yes, I am expecting Detroit to win the game as they... Continue their quest to be the top seed in the NFC, uh, currently second behind the Eagles. But I think the Packers hang tight. Uh, Jordan Love playing with a little more confidence, and you know they keep the game close. This spread this morning was 11 points, so it went up a point and a half. Uh, the Cowboys are now fair by 12 and a half, and the Cowboys just always seem to uh, blow out the lesser teams, which the Commanders definitely are. We know the Commanders' O-line has had some major issues, and Dallas definitely has a very solid pass rush that I think will give Sam Howell a lot of trouble. This was a tough one because the 49ers easily handled the Seahawks three times last season, each of their three meetings. Um, I'm expecting it to be a little closer. The game is in Seattle. Geno Smith, it seems like he's expected to play. Uh, we don't know if Kenneth Walker the third is, but I think Zach Charbonnet uh, will handle a bell cow role well if he is forced into action. Another, at least keep it relatively close. Uh, the Jets finally made that quarterback move, and I think it had to be done because of all the negative backlash and media around Zach Wilson, but is Tim Boyle really better? I mean, we haven't seen much from him, but he's uh, 0-3 in his career. What does he have? I think three touchdowns to nine interceptions for his career. Where I'm not sure he's an upgrade. I think Trevor Simeon would actually be their best chance of winning games. But uh, Dolphins just should be able to easily take care of them. Jaguars minus one and a half at the Texans. A very tough game. The Texans did beat the Jaguars in their first meeting in Jacksonville. Um... Really, Jacksonville needs to win this game if they want to uh, feel comfortable in their chances of winning the AFC South. Because if not, Houston will be tied with them if Houston were to win. And they would have the tiebreaker uh, with the winning both their head-to-head -head matchups. Tough game, but I'm going with the Jaguars. <sighs> I actually, originally, when I was looking this morning before work, I saw the Patriots are favorite by three. And I was thinking of taking them. Not that half a point does much, but I'm going the Giants plus three and a half home against the Patriots and probably the week's uh, least meaningful game. Well, there's one other that might be close. Uh, we don't know who's starting for the Patriots, whether it's Bailey Zappi or Mac Jones. We do know Tommy DeVito's starting, who had a three-touchdown game last week. Can he build off that momentum? And right now, I think the Giants' defense is playing well, although they didn't against the Raiders, but they did play well uh, against the Commanders. Steelers minus one at Bengals, and this is another one that uh, it's tough because I actually was leaning towards the Bengals, but then I thought about how the Raiders seem to play better in Antonio Pierce's first game as head coach. 
Uh, they easily covered. The Bills played a lot better after firing Ken Dorsey their first game against a pretty good defense in the Jets. Now Matt Canada has been fired. A lot of people were hoping for that. So I think maybe they, um, you know, at least for this week, play a little more freely. Offense looks better. And, of course, we know Joe Burrow is out. Jake Browning will be getting the start for the Bengals. So I'll go with the Steelers. I'm going Colts minus two and a half. Versus the Buccaneers, um, I think the Jonathan Taylor Zach Moss combo should be able to uh, run a muck on the Buccaneers. Uh, of course, no Shaquille Leonard surprising release which came yesterday or two days ago. Um, sad how he went from my multi-time All Pro injuries have slowed him down before even the age of thirty. Uh, here's the other games: games nine through sixteen this week. Going the Saints favorite by one. Do I have plus? I have plus one. I could have sworn it was minus one, but let me double check that. Anyhow, I just think the Saints are the better team. Uh, they are going back to Desmond Ritter. They are plus one. I'm sorry. Okay, so Saints are on the road by one. Uh, the Falcons are going back to Desmond Ritter, so they're playing musical chairs with quarterbacks. And you know the saying: if you have two quarterbacks, you really don't have any. Um, not that Derek. Cars playing out of his mind, but I just think the Saints are the better team. Uh, this one I was having a tough time, but I think uh, in the matchup of rookie quarterbacks, Will Levis, after a great first game, uh, hasn't played well, hasn't played that well since, but Bryce Young really hasn't played well all season. I think Jeffrey Simmons uh, and crew definitely give Bryce Young a hard time. <sighs> Broncos minus one and a half versus the Browns. I'm not fully sold on the Broncos, even with their four wins in a row. Uh, kind of a fluke win against the Bills, you know, an extra man on the field uh, and whatnot. But, I mean, Dorian Thompson-Robinson has not looked good at all for the Browns in his two starts. Uh, took a awful Steelers offense last week for the Browns to find a way to barely uh, slide past the Steelers, so I'm going the Broncos. I basically would go with the home team to win and Denver's home. Rams minus one at Cardinals. The Rams really surprised me with their win against Seattle. Uh, Seattle kind of blew the lead and missed the field goal at the end, uh, but maybe they could build off that momentum in a game they really need if they want any playoff hopes. Raiders plus eight and a half versus the Chiefs. Raiders are three and zero covering the spread with Antonio Pierce. Um, held tight with the Dolphins uh, was an impressive showing, especially by the defense. Only gave up twenty points, so I am expecting the Chiefs to win the game. But the Raiders recently have had some close matchup matchups with the Chiefs, even though the Chiefs are clearly the uh, better team on paper. So I think this game is close as well. But uh, Chiefs win, Raiders cover. I've been going against the Bills. Started started the season going with the Bills almost every week. The past three or four weeks went against the Bills. Uh, I don't know. One game with Joe Brady. I'm back on the Bills bandwagon uh, in what is an extremely tough matchup. They got the win to get over 500 last week against the Jets. They've got a tough schedule coming up. Um, but not saying they win, but I think it should be a very competitive game. Um, Josh Allen definitely played very well against the Jets. A good defense. Uh, Jalen Hurts and the Eagles offense didn't look great against the Chiefs. Uh, two rushing touchdowns by Jalen Hurts, but no passing touchdowns. Did enough to help me win in fantasy by five points, so thank you, Jalen. Um, our Sunday night game, the Ravens fared by three and a half at the Chargers. Chargers defense has been atrocious atrocious and we know that Joey Bosa will not be playing in this game which should help Lamar Jackson have somewhat of a field day even without Mark Andrews that is a big loss but I think Isaiah likely um, should perform fairly well in his new tight end one role and our Monday night game Justin Fields didn't play bad his first game back uh, but they did blow the lead against the Lions. Uh, you know, I think they come into the game, you know, feeling disappointed. 
Vikings, tough loss against the Broncos, uh, but they rebound. Uh, currently, I think the seventh seed in the NFC, so games like this, they really need to win uh, if they want to stay in the playoff picture. So there you have it. Those are my week 12 picks against the spread. Let me know in the comments what you agree with, what you disagree with, who are some of your best bets. Anyhow, don't forget to subscribe, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend to subscribe, like the video, share the video, hit the bell for notifications. I'm out.